because he is the conquering force of our lives. That's why the hymn writer would write for us to sing with time out in victory in Jesus. He loved me. He sought me. He bought me with his own blood. No wonder today Jesus is saying to our world, do you want a better life? He says to moms and dads, do you want a better life? Commitment today is just a thing of the past. And I know you've heard me tell this. You can go to Webster's Dictionary and you can look up the word commitment. It don't mean nothing to me. Webster's don't. The reason it doesn't, I experience what commitment is. Commitment is something that you make. If you make a commitment, you can't take back. You suffer the consequences of making a commitment, but you cannot take commitment back. In an airplane for the first time, not putting my weight down, but holding on to a handle, thinking that I was lightening the load, we started to take off for the first time on my plane trip. And I looked over at a good friend of mine who was piloting that thing, and I asked him a question, and he answered me correctly. I said to him, Bobby, how far down here do we get where we can't stop? He didn't even look at me. He said, Preacher, we're committed. Amen. He didn't have to pull Webster's Dictionary out to me and say, Now, a commitment is this. I had sense enough to know those pine trees down at the end of the runway was getting closer. Yeah. I had sense enough to know that what he had just told me was we was either going to fly or we going to fall. Yeah. And when a person commits their life to Jesus Christ, you don't take that commitment back. You suffer the results of making a commitment. And every day the Lord asks me to just make that commitment for the day that he would be the conquering, wonderful Savior of my life. That's why Mount Carmel these Sunday nights have opened their doors and turned their lights on and invited others to come and sing and pray and worship with you is that they want to ask you a question. Do you want a better life? Do you want a happy life? Better change that. Because the word happy depends on something happening for you to be happy. Do you want a joyous life? You see, joy comes. It doesn't matter if there's sickness, pain, and sorrow. Joy becomes because of a relationship to this Christ that I'm telling you about tonight. Do you want a better life? Do you want a better relationship to Jesus? He said, start then by giving up your excuses, saying, I don't have any man. Somebody always goes in before me. But you know what Jesus was doing? He wasn't talking to the one that stepped down first. He wasn't talking to the one that refused to help. He was talking to the man that needed the help. Amen. And he said, if you want it, take up your bed and walk. Yeah. And then he said to him the greatest words that I've ever heard. Son, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Tonight, every person in this room can leave this building tonight knowing that their sins have been forgiven. Amen. Knowing that all is well you and the Lord. And if you go to sleep tonight and don't wake up, what a glorious homecoming. They sang a song a while ago that just a few weeks ago in our church, we sang for a dear lady. Nobody thought about her dying. We prayed for a husband. We thought about his needs. But one morning I got a phone call that said that Sister White had gone home to be with the Lord. Stunned me. Shocked me. But the day of her funeral, her request was that song, Going Home, would be sung. Oh, we wept because there's a vacancy. We wept because there's an emptiness in a home. But oh, down in our hearts we rejoiced because another saint of God had gone home. Amen. So tonight as we bow our heads, the compassionate Christ is here. The commanding Savior is here. The challenging one is here. And the one that will conquer 
on your behalf, all the needs of your life as you submit them to him is here. And if you're not a Christian and you're not saved, this church is praying that tonight you will be. If your heart is cold, the joy of your relationship to him is not lacking, as vibrant and joyous as it used to be and you need a commitment of dedication tonight, we're going to invite you to come. And I'm going to ask Brother Thomas to stand down here. And Brother choir leaders are going to come and I'm going to ask for an invitation song tonight. The musicians are coming and so we're going to sing together a hymn and we're going to give an invitation where Jesus is simply asking us if we want that new life, do we want that joyous living on a day-by-day -day basis in relationship to Him? As you bow your heads tonight and we have a prayer together, I'm going to ask us not to look around. I'm going to ask us to look within. I'm going to ask us to ask ourselves the question, am I what Jesus wants me to be tonight? Am I what this Savior that the preacher has talked about tonight wants me to be? You answer that as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, that you've given us such an opportunity to be at your house. Lord, I thank you for prayers that's been prayed. I thank you for the songs that's been sung. But Lord, more than anything else, I thank you for your presence that has been here. Lord, I thank you for your view and vision that you have of all things. Lord, you know every person seated. You know every person standing. You know, dear Lord, what we need tonight. Precious Jesus, I just ask you for Christ's sake, Lord, that you'd meet every need tonight. Lord, if there's needs that needs to be brought to this place of prayer in the front of this church, Lord, when the music begins and the song starts, help them not to debate whether tonight's the night because, Lord, if you're speaking, it is the night. And we're inviting and asking that every person leave this building right with you. And for all that you've done and are going to do, we'll thank you. Because we're asking this in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen and amen. We're going to stand together. We're going to sing. Brother, what we